The Hinkle, HE-178, and Gloucester E-2039 were among the advances in aviation technology that were reported to the U.S. Army Air Corps in 1939 during World War II, hinting that aircraft without propellers would be the future of air combat. The Bell XP-52 and XP-59 prototypes, which were developed as part of the U.S.'s own covert fighter program, were the country's first fighter jets. Officer Frank Whittle of the Royal Air Force filed a patent in 1930, sparking the start of the turbojet's development in Britain. But not many people agreed with him when he said that aircraft powered by turbojets were the way of the future. Working on their own turbojet, German engineers created the Heinkel HE-178, the first jet-powered aircraft, which flew for the first time in 1939. It would take the British until May 1941 to operate a jet-powered aircraft. The technology was written off as a science fiction dream by U.S. military authorities prior to the British operation. Major General Henry H. Hap Arnold learned about the British jet program in April 1941 while seeing an E-28 demonstration in the United Kingdom. When a British delegation came to the U.S., they brought up the jet program. Arnold went back to the United States with the airplane power plant blueprints that he had sought and obtained. Plans for the W-2 B-23 engine were shipped to America in October, along with a demonstration model of the British Whittle W-1 turbojet engine. Arnold invited General Electric to create an American version of the engine since he was aware that one was required. The engineer made contact with Buffalo, New York-based Bell Aircraft Corporation to collaborate on a top-secret project known as the MX-397. Lawrence Del Bell, the company's CEO, approved the proposal and got to work on three prototypes. Only a select few employees of the corporation were aware of the project, which was conducted in the strictest of confidence. The United States Army Air Forces began a misinformation operation, dubbed Project P-59A, to imply that it was an expansion of the shelved Bell XP-59 fighter project in order to conceal the development of the first American fighter aircraft. The engineered engine continued to be mentioned by General Electric as a spare part. On January 9, 1942, the fighter jet design was finished, and work on the aircraft started right away. Aviation executive Lawrence Dale Bell detested taking to the air. Chief test pilot Robert M. Stanley was given the project, but Stanley objected. The first prototype was shipped to Maroc Army Airfield in California, a remote location sandwiched between Shadow Mountain and the San Bernardino Mountains. The land was so isolated that development could be kept a secret, and it was named for the brothers who had originally resided there. Without telling them, engineers, technicians, and mechanics were transferred to the California desert in 1942 and dispatched to Los Angeles. On September 12, 1942, the first XP-59A touched down at the airstrip. It took seven days to reach Maroc. Previously a rural airstrip, Edwards Air Force Base is now home to the Air Force Materiel Command, which conducts research and development on new aircraft systems and flying technologies there. A key center for aerospace research and development, the site also contains NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center, the Air Force Test Pilot School, and the Air Force Test Center. The first high-speed taxi test was carried out at the Aero Comet Aircraft Factory on October 1st. The maiden flight was made the next day by Colonel Lawrence Craigie with test pilot Robert M. Stanley of Bell Aircraft at the controls. Although the test flight went well, the project's success did not last long. The open-air flight observer stations on the prototypes and initial production versions were eventually carved out of the aircraft's nose. The three P-59 Aero Comets shown a number of flaws over time, including as poor lateral stability, an unstable engine, and insufficient input responsiveness. 
After piloting one of the prototypes, Charles Elwood Yeager, the first person to surpass the speed of sound in level flight, was pleased with how smooth it was. Despite poor performance and continuous problems, the U.S. Army Air Force has purchased 80 production copies of the P-59 Aero Comet. The General Electric J-31 engines were not as powerful as the engine found in the YP-59A, the following variant. Despite being the first jet engine to be mass-produced in America, the J-31's improvements were less dramatic than anticipated, with a peak speed increase of 5 miles per hour and a shorter overhaul interval. The weaponry of the aircraft was positioned for direct firing, which limited its lifespan prior to maintenance. With its powerful armament and better weapon placement, the Aero Comet was a superior light aircraft compared to other aircraft. Robert M. Stanley said that during early testing, the jet was unstable and would shake violently when the machine gun trigger was pushed. The British Gloucester Meteor, the first jet fighter and the only one of its kind to engage in combat operations for the Allies during World War II, was traded for the third YP-59A. The American Aero Comet aircraft was deemed inadequate by the Royal Air Force, as pilots reported worse performance when compared to their current jets and worse than the North American P-51 Mustang propeller. Under the pretense of YFL-21, two Aero Comets were supplied to the U.S. Navy for examination. However, they proved to be ineffective for carrier missions. At the conclusion of the testing phase, no images of the aircraft had been made public and the Pentagon maintained the confidentiality of all project details. Despite persistent difficulties, Bell Aircraft completed 50 of the 80 Aero Comets that were intended, with 20 being given the P-59A designation and 30 being given the modified P-59B. Fall 1944 saw the arrival of the A models, who were equipped with 200 rounds for each of the three machine guns and 44 rounds for the M4 cannon. Army Air Force's pilots were trained in the handling and operation of jet aircraft by the 412 fighter group using the B type. Aero Comet's ability to turn swiftly was remarked by Captain Eugene, one of the first line military pilots to test the aircraft. A black program provided funding and construction for the Lockheed P 80 and Aero Comet projects. The funding for the Aero Comet's project was not disclosed in conventional documentation and it remained a secret until the end of 1944. In order to prevent reports regarding the new engine type, the aircraft were carried with a fictitious propeller. In June 1945, the 412 fighter group was dispatched to the Morak airfield. However, the war ended shortly after. After that, the unit was moved to Marshfield, California, where the U.S. Army Air Force acknowledged that the defective plane was not fit to be used as an operational fighter. Lockheed P-80 aircraft, which were already in service and outperforming the Bell 59 Aero Comet fighters of the time, were chosen by the Air Force in lieu of the former aircraft. All of the original fighters were rendered unusable by 1950 and were either used as artifacts or for military training. The Lockheed P-80s, in spite of their failure, enabled the Air Forces to carry on developing jet-powered aircraft. America's first fighter plane, the P-59 Aero Comet, is still in museum collections, numbering six. The remaining five are on exhibit around the United States, with one undergoing restoration at the Plains of Fame Museum in Chino, California. Four of them are still in existence. The final one is at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. The others are at Pioneer Village in Nebraska, the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio, March Air Reserve Base in California, and Edwards Air Force Base. The Bell P-59 Aero Comet set the standard for later fighter aircraft, even though none were deployed in actual battle. There are more than two dozen German aircraft videos available on this channel. To watch those video, click the link on the left. To watch videos about giant flying boats, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching 
and don't forget to subscribe.